Amigos, amigas, bienvenidos, bienvenidas. ¿Cómo estáis? Un verdadero placer teneros por aquí por el canal de YouTube. Un verdadero gusto teneros de vuelta. Espero que estéis muy bien, espero que estéis estupendamente y con ganas de continuar la historia de Angie, la protagonista de este fantástico y estupendo Burhounds Lane. Antes de comenzar el capítulo de hoy, pediros que si os gusta el contenido, si os gusta lo que hacemos aquí, por favor, no dudéis en apoyarlo, ya sea con una suscripción, con un like, con un comentario. Siempre se agradece muchísimo vuestra interacción y lo espero, lo espero con ganas. De acuerdo. Continuemos. Eh, capítulo número 6, Mr. Fox. Recordáis que estamos en la parte final de la historia. Estamos, eh, digamos, en la última prueba. Recordáis que el gato nos había comentado que uh, teníamos que hacer varias cositas. Lo primero, teníamos que eh, abrirnos completamente con alguien. A contar todo lo bueno y todo lo malo, todo real, contar todo lo que teníamos en el interior. Después de eso aparecerá alguien llamado Mr. Fox, eh, que llegará a la granja, tenemos que alimentarlo, no hablar con él y seguirlo hasta un lugar donde habrá algo enterrado, necesitaremos sangre y eso que desenterremos nos servirá para curar nuestra enfermedad. Bueno, vamos a hablar, porque bueno, está aquí en de fiesta raca. Ha sido encontrarse conmigo detrás del granero, vale. Vamos a salir. Vamos a dirigirnos hacia el granero donde se encontraba Richard, recordáis el caballo. Eh, creo que salimos por aquí. Exacto, vamos allá. Vale, no podemos hablar, hacer mucho más. Vale, vamos allá. Es un hombre encantador, pero ¿cómo, cómo podría comprender a alguien como yo? Por cierto, Richard nos trajo aquí y seguirá muerto, supongo, ¿no? Dudo mucho que esté vivo. Sí, vamos a esperar a Jenny. Ahí viene Jenny. Well, guess what I found. Or wait, I'll give you a clue. It's about this long. It's known to cause heart and lung diseases, and it usually comes in a pack of 20. Look, I just didn't want you to get back to your old habit. Especially now that you've been drinking. You're literally doing it all the time yourself. Oh, so please, don't be a fucking hypocrite. Why? I'm having it whether you like it or not. Oh. This is heaven. Oh, why did I ever quit? Jenny, there's something I want to talk to you about. ¿Recuerdas cuando te dije que tengo cáncer? Remember when I told you that I have cancer? Cancer? Uh, yes. But didn't you say you were getting better? No. This is incurable, inoperable lung cancer. It'll keep growing until it kills me. Are you sure? You don't look like you're dying to me. Wait, what? Of course I'm sure. Just because there's no blood pouring out of my eyes and I don't crawl on the floor doesn't mean that I'm fine. For now. I don't believe you. My, my pap had cancer and he looks like Uncle Fester. You know, from the Adams family. And he puked a lot. That's because you probably had chemo. I'm not doing it. It's too late. And I've seen what it does to people. I don't want to die stuck in a hospital bed. I know a good doctor in LA. I'll give you his number when I get back home. You don't understand? This can't be cured. Not by the doctors, anyway. No estoy seguro de si alimenté a Richard como debía. I'm not sure if I fed Richard the way I was meant to. Wait, wait, wait. Who is Richard again? El caballo. The horse? Oh, uh, right. Oh, sorry. Too much wine makes me forget stuff. By the way, I'm trying to get Kieran drunk so he would tell me more about the bunker door in the basement. He's lived on this farm for a long ass time, right? He's gotta know something. Another few drinks and he'll spill it all to me like a good little girl. Quiero vivir, pero ya ni siquiera sé cómo hacerlo. I want to live, but I don't even know how to anymore. I can feel the doom clock ticking above my head and it's driving me insane. I should make a bucket list like other people do, to live 
while I still can. Do cool, crazy stuff like bungee jumping or swimming with fucking dolphins. But instead, here I am, unable to accept what's coming, desperately trying to cheat death. But no one has that kind of power. Least of all me. <gasps> hey! I swam with dolphins in the Bahamas last year. Wh what? Uh huh. Did you know? The dolphins don't really smile. <laughs> I mean, they look like they do. But they don't. It's just the shape of their face. Do you even listen to what I'm trying to say? No. I'm doing my best. But I don't really understand why you've decided to tell me your entire life story all of a sudden. Can it wait till tomorrow or something? No. Why not? Because I'm fucking dying. We're all dying. But we're not dead yet, are we? By the way, when dolphins die, imagine this. They still smile. Mmm. That's great, Jenny. That's great. I don't really have any friends. I mean, I have colleagues from work. Well, mostly just Tracy, because... Working for the agency, I travel a lot, covering shifts in hospitals and nursing homes all across the country. The pay is good, but you don't really get enough time to bond with anyone. This job here is quite different. I don't usually spend that long in one place. Angie? Why are you telling me this? I just need a friend, I guess. A real one. Someone like you? Me? <laughs> Angie, are you blind? You really think I'm a good friend material for anyone, let alone someone like you. Look at me. I'm a Hollywood star. I got to the top by sleeping with every man that wanted me and by destroying every woman that stood in my way. It's in my job description to act like a spoiled fucking bitch, to demand, to take anything I want. And I have no time or desire to be anyone's friend because I know that in the end, I'll have to stab them right in the back. I always do. I know there's a part of you that cares. You weren't looking for me in the woods. You risked your life. I was bored. This isn't the real you. Then what do you know about the real me? You're a drug addict, Jenny. And if you wanted to, you could get help. And you could get better. <laughs> That'll teach you to mind your own fucking business. Oh, and by the way... I think you made it all up. You don't really have cancer, do you? You just wanted people to feel sorry for you. And that's fucking pathetic, you know? Amigo mío, no reviviste parte de magia. Todo debe haber sido un extraño sueño. Buah, está pudriéndose el pobre, tío. Yo creo... Mi opinión es que vamos a tener que hablar con George. Creo que el único que, es que entiende algo en esta casa es George. Oh, what in God's name, man. Jenny pushed me into a puddle. Mm. Yeah, I figured it had something to do with her. That young lady can be lovely and charming when she wants to. But I'm starting to think she's nothing but trouble. She's just dealing with some problems at the moment. I thought I could help her, but I was wrong. She'll be fine. Women like her always come out on top. But who's gonna help you? Me? Look, 
I might be old, but I'm not blind. It's time to open this big bag of worries. You've been carrying it around for weeks. Just dije. Es, es el único, es el único. All right. I'll tell you. There's a disgusting, ugly cancer growing inside my chest. It's here to kill me. And there's nothing I can do to stop it. I probably shouldn't even be here, but I'd convince myself that I should do this one last job. I thought this would pay for the trip my late husband always dreamed of. Japan. It always seemed so... cool. But now that I think about it, it's not even my dream. Do I really want to go there? Or am I desperately trying to run away from people saying they're sorry and the way they look at me? To hide and pretend that I'm still fine and nothing's happened. And yes, I was married. It felt real. It was real. But my husband was a sick man. We both knew our time was short. And no matter how loved he made me feel, I accepted we wouldn't live happily forever after. And yet, it still surprised me. How quickly it all happened. Suddenly, I was alone. But I promised James that I would be strong. And I was determined to keep that promise no matter what. I made an effort to get dressed every morning, to eat, to go to work. Knowing that in time, the pain would become easier to bear. And then this happened. First, the cough. Then the chest pains. And blood on the tissue. I couldn't believe the same fucking thing was happening to me. I lost a husband, but I wasn't ready to lose my life. I mean, I promised him I'd live on. But they called me in, and they confirmed what you already knew. I remember they all looked down at their shoes whenever they mentioned the word cancer. That fucking cancer! Was it because I smoked more since James had died? But some people smoke all their lives, and they never get sick. Life had taken so much from me already, and then... It still decided it wasn't enough yet, so it came back for what's left. What did I do to be punished like this? Why me? It's not fucking fair. So, now, I know how this ends. I get nowhere. My whole life was fucking pointless. I achieved nothing, and those few people that know me will soon forget I ever existed. And on top of it, I'm probably losing my mind, because I've seen things. A talking cat from a burned house. Different worlds. Disfigured creatures. But that's probably just my cancer spreading into my brain, because I'm sure it was all in my head. George. I'm just tired. I'm scared. And now I'm covered in mud, and I don't even have any clean clothes to put on. And I... ¿Qué personaje Jaco es, es George? Es un personaje maravilloso, el personaje de George. Diría que es mi personaje favorito de todo el juego, sin lugar a dudas. Thank you, George. I... I needed to let it all out, I guess. And now you also need a nice cup of tea. <laughs> I'll make you one. But first, let's get you a change of clothes. I'm all right. These will dry soon. No, no. You should take one of the jumpers from the line. Anne, there's a pair of jeans there that looks about your size, too. No, I can't. I insist. They're Sarah's old clothes. She hadn't worn them in years. Nah, they're too small for her anyway. Moy was thinking I'd give them to a charity shop in Honiton. But this is even better. And it'll save us a trip in a town. Yeah? Of course. Go on, grab one and go get changed. 
o oh, put the cat on. Es increíblemente encantador, macho. Vale, en primer lugar me llevaré estos pantalones. Y después el jersey. A uh, izquierda, rayos de colores del 89. Rayos de colores. Vale, supongo que cambiarse de ropa, supongo que lo haremos en nuestra habitación. Tendría todo el sentido del mundo. Uh... Ok. Vale. Unirse a George en la cocina. Nos hemos cambiado de ropa. Por cierto, nos queda muy bien, he de decir. Este es el baño, perdón. El gato quemado me dijo que no dijera ni una sola palabra. Permanece en el silencio por raro que pueda resultar. Ahora para la segunda parte de la tarea alimentar a Fox. ¿Qué tipo de comedia le gustará? Alimentar a Mr. Fox. jamón voy a ponerle bacon voy a ponerle queso eh, ¿por qué le ha puesto ¿por qué me ha puesto salchicha? Eh, sardinas pan Tío, eh, ¿por qué pone lo que le da la gana? Eso es como salchichón, ¿no? Uh, no sé por qué está haciendo esto, tío. Cosa random y, y le pone lo que le da la gana. Es, es, no tengo muy claro qué puedo ponerle. Vale, si pongo pepino. Pues no sé lo que es. ¿Mayo y dulce? Si le pongo mostaza. Oh, Dios. No sé qué es esta movida. Vale, me lo llevo. No, no, creo que le, no creo que le guste, tío. ¿Y si le doy la carne congelada? Me flipa. ¿Y si le doy el sándwich? Mierda, todavía tiene hambre No, no hay que hacerle más Preparar comida Ya probé con el sándwich, creo que quiero algo más Ay, ¿de qué le puedo dar? No, no más comida eh, ¿Birra?
¿Qué podría...? No se me gusta. Puede que haya algo arriba. Este es el lavabo. Aquí no hay nada. Pensé que podría darle algo de la fiesta, pero no. Y yo aquí no tengo nada. ¿Se os ocurre algo? No hay absolutamente nada de nada. Cama de George. Vale. En la parte de arriba no hay absolutamente nada. Fuera. ¿Cómo llego tan rápido? Tal vez no, no podremos darle un pedazo de Richard o algo así. Pero... Esto se está volviendo cada vez más, no es raro, ahora me está siguiendo. Eh, es que Richard está aquí muerto, tío. Es un cadáver, puede que se lo coma. Señalar al caballo. Bueno, es un zorro, no un lobo. Se va a comer el caballo. Esto es una locura. Se está poniendo morado con él. Debería retroceder. ¿Qué he hecho? Pobre Richard. Esa bestia se lo está haciendo añicos. Bueno, ha quedado encantado. Para allá. Vale, ahora toca seguirle. Seguir a Mr. Fox. Sigámosle. Tiene un tonillo muy guapo, eh. La verdad. Esperemos que nos encontremos que no encontrarnos con George. ¿Quién sabe qué haría si viera este tipo raro enmascarado? O sea que es una máscara. Yo pensaba que era un zorro hombre de verdad, tío. Vale, pero por lo que veo... Es un chiflado con una máscara. Yo estaba convencido de que era un, hombre, un zorro hombre o hombre zorro. Zorro hombre, no, hombre zorro. ¿No? Te sigo, Mr. Fox. Pero al parecer es un jamao con una máscara. ¿A dónde me está llevando? No sé.
Esto no lo más que habrá cambiado por mucho tiempo. Debo detener a este idiota antes de que abra la boca. Lo siento, amigo, no tener elección. O forma un cigar, ¿no? Es menos mal que Mr. Fox se enrolla y me espera. Vale, ahora tendrá que marcar un sitio. Y tendremos que desenterrar algo. Y además necesitamos nuestra sangre. Ahí dentro, parece profundo, pero no puedo ver a través de esta nivel roja. Bueno, supongo que solo hay una forma de descubrirlo. Adentro. Ah. Nuevo objetivo. Encontrar el tesoro. Medicamentos, están por todas partes. Me está emitiendo una película antigua, pero le pasa algo al sonido. Un gran armario polvoriento. No hay nada. Bloquea la puerta del baño. Desbloquear. Uh. Mm, no tengo ni idea. La puerta está cerrada. Estoy atrapada aquí. No sé por qué, pero siento que alguien le dejó aquí para mí a propósito. Desbloquear. Abrazo esto. Ancla, brazo. Ahí está. Una llave. Vale, abrimos la puerta. No puedo entrar, la puerta está tapiada. Podría. Vamos a hacer un guardadito. A ver, siempre hay que probar. Ya sabéis que en este tipo de juegos, pues hombre, todo lo que tienes tienes que probarlo. Quiero decir, hay, hay un montón de opciones, entonces hay que ir probando cositas. La puerta está bloqueada por un montón de cenizas en cuanto a esto, le claramente falta un poco. Huele bien, creo que es sándalo. 
Una mujer excéntrica, pero con una cara como esa le costará encontrar un novio, sin importar las que sean sus pestañas. Encender lámpara. Quitar bombilla. Apagar lámpara. Nuevo objeto añadido. I know why you came here. You want the box, don't you? A la caja? The box? No need to pretend. I know you want it. Everyone wants it. Well, that's not entirely true. I don't want it. But you're new here, and why else would you come to this crumbling old house other than to find that damn box? Am I right? Me dijeron que buscar el tesoro. I was told to look for the treasure. This box sounds like it could be it. I'm sure it is. After all, there's nothing else here that's worth looking for. Just a whole lot of suffering wherever you go. ¿Quién eres? Who are you? Um, look. Whenever I try to remember my name, I get this huge fucking headache. It literally feels like my brain's being stabbed with hundreds of tiny knives. So, no offense, but I'll just skip that part, may I? It's not like it matters anyway. I'm just another ghost living on Burnhouse Lane, waiting for something. I think it should be happening any day now. ¿Por qué no quieres la caja para ti? Why do you not want the box for yourself? Oh, that's because I know what's inside. And it's not for me. Or rather, I know I'd be very tempted to use it because I really don't want to die. But that would make me someone that I don't want to be. So I'll pass. Thank you. But you can have it. I don't judge. Déjate de rodeos y dime qué hay en la caja. Stop beating around the bush and tell me what's in the box. Now. Don't start with this cat voodoo. No Please. Funciona. I've been around cats for so long, I've grown immune to it. But since you really want to know, I'll tell you a bit more. You want spoilers? I'll spoil it for you. Why not? But I'll only do it if you play my game and give me a correct answer to my question. Interested? Okay. Yes. Great! It involves magic, so listen carefully. I am now picturing an object. A vegetable. I can see it inside my head clear as day. I will now send this image into your mind. Share it with you telepathically. I want you to focus real hard and see it too. Take your time, and then tell me, what vegetable am I thinking of? Wow. Ah, repollo. The answer is cabbage. Nope. That's a wrong answer. Hey, how do I know you're not cheating? I never do that. Shouldn't you have the correct answer like written on a piece of paper to prove it to me? Huh. Good point. I should, really. Oh well, I'll try that next time. But for now, the game's over, I'm afraid. Estás enferma como yo, ¿verdad? You're sick. Like me, aren't you? Everyone's sick on Burnhouse Lane. Haven't you noticed that yet? We're all dealing with it differently. Some of us give up right at the start. 
They put a gun to their head and pull the trigger. They swallow poison. Anything, really, just to escape the horrors waiting for them here. Then there's the weak ones. They try to fight, but how can they win against their own minds? So they all turn into pathetic shadows of their former selves, and they wander the dark corners of this place like zombies. And then there's us. We are strong enough to see it through to the end, but at what cost? Cuéntame más sobre esta caja. Tell me more about this box. Well, it's black, which, by the way, happens to be my favorite color. And it's made of wood, about this big. But it's not the box itself that you want. It's what's in it. And what's that? Oh, I won't spoil it for you. You'll see for yourself when you get it. If you get it. Because it's not going to be easy. ¿Sabes dónde puedo encontrar esta caja? Do you know where I can find this box? Yeah. It's in the other building, right across this great big chasm. Look. But how can I get there? I know a way. I could take you there. But there's something we should do before we go. And I know this will sound a bit crazy, but we'll need a cat to help us. The bent cat? You know him? What? No, he's not burned. He's white as snow, with a black stripe on his tail. He kind of looks like a big raccoon, you know what I mean? Moonlight? Yes! Oh. We've been to hell and back together. He's an old friend. Where is he? Well, it's a long bloody street. He could be anywhere. But you can summon him. Summon? A cat? Summon a cat. How the hell do I summon a cat? Well, there's only one way I know. So, tell me. Can you by any chance play the piano? What? Yeah. I can. I used to be pretty good. But what's that got to do with bloody cats? They love it. How do you know? I have this friend who always opens the window and plays for the neighborhood cats. And they all come running like she's their cat mother calling them for dinner. Shall we ask your friend to play then? No, she... she can't come to Burnhouse Lane, thankfully. So, yeah, it's gonna have to be you, I'm afraid. Oh, and make sure you put out a bowl of milk for the cat first. They like that. Okay, milk... yeah. Vale, uh, ¿hay algo en particular que deba tocar? Is there anything in particular I should play? I don't think it matters, as long as the music is coming straight from your heart. I haven't played in years. Don't worry, it'll all come back to you. It's time for me. Be careful out there. I heard strange noises outside earlier tonight. Vale, o sea que... Tocar el piano... Vale, necesitamos una llave. Uh, la puerta se bloquea por un tercero, pero que no estuviera totalmente le falta el pomo. Bien. Necesitamos un pomo. Hacia abajo. Vamos a ver qué nos encontramos en este piso. Oigo algo. Una silla de ruedas, que me viera aquí o estaba descapacitado demasiado enfermo para caminar. Uh, no me gusta nada esta zona. Tengo miedo de que alguien me mate, algo me mate. Y tener que hacer toda esta sección de nuevo. Entonces vamos a hacer un guardadito. Por si acaso. 
¿Por qué? Porque ya sabéis que aquí los enemigos nos matan de forma instantánea, es decir, nos hacen insta-kill. Entonces, si nos llegan a matar ahora, pues tendríamos que hacer toda la sección de la chica del piano. Entonces, por si acaso, bueno, pues si nos matan aquí, pues ya tenemos un guardadito en el problema. Eso me quita todo el miedo. Está atascado. La aguja de los segundos sigue avanzando y retrocediendo. El cuerpo parece terriblemente deformado y está cubierto de ampollas rojas que supuran. No hay duda de que este hombre murió después de una larga, larga enfermedad. Al final lo convirtió en un monstruo. Su estómago parece estar hinchado. ¿Habrá algo dentro? Eso no va a funcionar. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. A encender lámpara. Apagar lámpara. Quitar bombilla. Y voy a poner la morada. Vale. Uh, apagar lámpara. Quitar bombilla. Perdón, no sé, vale uh, Encender la lámpara Vale, es que es Ya está encendida No parece que revele nada, ¿no? Voy a apagarla y voy a quitarla no parece que revele demasiado. Vale, vamos a bajar. Puerta izquierda y creo que puerta a la derecha. Ah, vale, esto es una bajada. ¿Y aquí? Vale, tenemos un montón de bombillas de un montón de colores. No sé si es buena idea, he de decir. Escopeta. Fantástico. Ah, escopeta. Vale, de momento no podemos hacer mucho más. Vale, vamos a hacer un guardadito, por lo que pueda pasar. Un buen cigar para terminar el capítulo tranquilamente, sin mucho agobio, pero por favor, como siempre os digo, chicos, chicas, no fuméis, no fuméis, es el mal, os lo dice un fumador, exfumador, no fuméis, todo mal, no sacas nada bueno, nada positivo, hacedme caso, haced caso a Tito Richard. Amigos, amigas, vamos a dejar el capítulo aquí de este Burzal Burhounds Lane, que ya queda poquito, yo creo que ya estamos muy cerquita del desenlace, muy cerquita del final, espero que hayáis pasado un ratito agradable, espero que hayáis disfrutado y nos vemos en la próxima historia, el próximo capítulo, en la próxima aventura. Gracias por vuestro tiempo, cuidaos mucho, chao.